My first actual hard rock concert was Deep Purple on the Machine Head Tour in 19, in May of 1973. That was it. And wow. that was my introduction to, just prior to that, I had gotten the single of Smoke on the Water. And I was just, you know, I'd heard you store the guitar before, but I put it on and, I, and it was, uh, 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 you know, I heard it and I was like, well, what? What's that? You know, I was like, I kept playing the intro over and over because it was isolated by itself, and I was, I was just fascinated with the sound of it. Oh, this is so funny. Yeah. Um. So I'm, you know, my age group. So the first album I ever bought was very popular at the time with my money was the Beatles soundtrack, Help. And um, I was very young, I was seven. That was the first full album, All right, I had some singles already. That was the first full album I'd ever bought. Um, and I bought it at, in a hardware store. They actually sold albums, records in the hardware store that was in the strip shopping center where my father had a, a drugstore. A little general drugstore. And I'd go hang out at the hardware store and look at the records, and I finally bought that album. That's awesome. I, That's awesome. Cool. Death and insanity. Are you truly safe? Sitting in the shadow of your stuff, go back and say, You dream of a country that you have gotten to know so well. Yeah, uh, I think the first riff that I was ever able to play, like a rhythm guitar part, through all the way to the end of the song, was When the Levee Breaks by Led Zeppelin. And uh, so I kind of consider that to be my first one that I actually could play, even even the bridge and stuff. And I, I actually got through that one. Then later, later when I was more in tune to bass, I used to play along a lot with uh, John and Twice and the Who. I love their records. And also, um, I'd attempt, I was fascinated with the Jethro Tull bassists. They were really super melodic. You know? um, I, I couldn't play most of it, but I tried to. Yeah. Now I can. We played at the Show Met Civic Center, which no longer exists, outside of New Orleans, at a show with um, us and the Agnostic Front and Motorhead. Wow. It was on the Motorhead's Orgasmatron tour. I'm told later that uh, all the guys in Pantera were in the audience. They were just kind of getting going. And uh, what I remember, what was crazy about it, we had, we had a great time playing. But uh, two things that were great about that. <clears throat> the best one for me was I'm playing and we're opening for Motorhead. And I'm doing my little Hallow's Eve playing thing. And I'm looking up and I'm running on the stage. And I look up for a breath and I look over the side of the stage. And there's Lemmy standing there just behind the PA cabinets. And he, look, and he looks right at me and goes, and I went, oh. I, you know, I could have just took off my bass right then, dropped it, and said I'm done. <laughs> I got a thumbs up from Lemmy. Do I need to go any further? Uh, I can go do art now. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can. It's done. That's awesome. So that that was that was a big moment for me. And I kind of never forgot that. Also that night they had a full scale riot. And Mother had only got to play six songs. There was a whole big riot. The police came to the audience and all kind of stuff. And we all got out of there, you know, with the skin of our teeth and. So that was a crazy night. I think Lemmy even mentions it in one of the books he's talking about. Yeah, there were two in particular that I look back and, and they were turned into rather historic. We played at CBGB's. It was Whiplash. How was he the Nasty Savage? Wow. It was kind of like a, one of the first metal nights they'd ever had, if not the first. Um, and and uh, that was a heck of a show. And then um, also, we played at Lemoore in Brooklyn a lot. And back then, we kind of just thought, hey, there's this neat place in New York that it seems like everybody's played. Yeah, everybody played there. You know, everybody. Just start naming people. Just everybody. And uh, we met back there and played a lot. That was our place in New York. We'd play there four times a year. It was awesome. I had turned back to the wall. We had a great drummer that toured with us. He didn't record with us, but he toured with us 
on um, in 1988, and his name was Tom Knight, and he went on to have a very successful career. When he left Hallow's Eve, he got done touring with us. It wasn't really animosity, we're friends. He, he went straight from us to doing demos with TLC. Yeah, so he's the drummer on, you know, Waterfalls and stuff like that. Um, he told me later how the process, so it was really interesting and everything. But yeah, so he was their drummer through their whole career. There were pictures of, I mean, just two years later, he's showing me pictures, uh, you know, that he did of himself with an entire stadium behind him and stuff. And they're up front and whatever, and he's at the camera.